In this video, we'll walk through the process of removing and installing a disc brake rotor. We will cover both six bolt and center lock designs, as well as rotor adapters. Hello, I'm Truman with Park Tool. Here are a few reasons you would want to replace your rotor. One, your rotor is worn out from use. By measuring the thickness of the braking surface and comparing it to an unused part of the rotor, you can determine if it is worn out. Typically, measurable wear of two to three tenths of a millimeter or more is evidence of a worn rotor. Some manufacturers provide wear specifications. Check with the manufacturer for brand specific information. You can also estimate replacement limits by running a pick or paperclip across the braking surface. If it feels rough and has a step at the end, this indicates that there has been a significant amount of thinning. Replace this rotor. If the rotor is worn out, check to see if the pads are also worn, and replace them if necessary. See this other video for more information. Number two is a badly bent rotor. Symptoms of a bent rotor include a rub or noise caused by a lateral deviation. Rebending is possible in some cases, but replacement is sometimes the best option. See our video on rotor truing for more information. Third, you just want to change to a rotor with a different diameter, or upgrade to a better quality rotor. In general, you'll want to replace a rotor with one of the same sides. If you are changing rotor sizes, you'll likely need to make changes to your caliper's adapter as well. Check with the manufacturer for more information. There are four main sizes commonly used in the bike industry. 140 mm, 160 mm, 180 mm, and 203 mm. However, there are a few outliers that could apply to you, so be sure to double check by measuring. Sometimes the size will be listed on the rotor just to make it easy to replace. Otherwise, you will need a suitable measuring device. The rotor size is determined by the outer diameter of the rotor. There are also rotors on the market that are only compatible with certain pad compounds. These rotors should clarify this on the rotor itself. Another thing to consider when getting a new rotor is whether your hub has a center lock or six bolt interface. Rotors are secured to a center lock hub using a lock ring with a tool interface. Six bolt hubs use six bolts that hold the rotor in place. Both systems are covered in this video, as well as six bolt to center lock adapters. Let's begin with six bolt rotors. For center lock rotors, skip to the time shown. For rotor adapter installation, skip to this time. Typical tools and supplies for six bolt rotors can include a hand wrench and torque wrench with bit in the appropriate size. The most common rotor bolts are T25 Torx compatible. There are exceptions. You will also need thread locker, clean rags, and isopropyl alcohol. Remove the wheel from the bike. Loosen and remove the rotor bolts using the appropriate wrench. Be careful to engage your wrench all the way into the fastener as the bolts have a shallow recess. After all the bolts are safely out, remove the rotor. Next, we install the new rotor. If the rotor came with new bolts, check them for aerobic thread locker. These bolts are ready to install. If the bolts have no thread locker, you can use thread prep such as Park Tool TLR1 inside the hub rotor mounting holes. It only takes a little bit to be effective. Do not grease or oil the threads. The oils can creep outward from the heat of braking. It is important the braking surface of the new rotor stay free of contaminants, including any from your hands. Rotors are designed to rotate one way. Most designs feature an arrow, which should match the rotation of the wheel. Otherwise, orient the rotor so the side with the writing is facing out. Place the rotor on the hub, handling the rotor from the inside edges. Line up the holes on the rotor with the mounting holes of the hub. Hand thread the rotor bolts. Make sure you do not cross thread them. Now using your wrench, thread the bolts in so they are close to, but not touching the rotor face. At this time, you should also clock your rotor in a clockwise direction. 
This is to mate the front edge of the rotor against the bolts to reduce any sudden shearing force that may happen if movement occurs. Snug the bolts while holding the rotor in place. Now set your torque wrench or torque driver to the appropriate setting. Check with the rotor manufacturer for specifications. A typical torque for these bolts is about four to six newton meters. If you're using a hand wrench, use perceived effort, which means applying about 11 pounds of effort to a wrench held four inches from the bolt. Tighten in a star pattern, as shown. Use a clean rag and isopropyl alcohol to wipe both sides of the rotor surfaces. The wheel is now ready to be reinstalled on the bike. After installation, it is a good idea to bed in your brakes. See this video for more information. Typical tools and supplies for center lock rotors can include an appropriate lock ring tool. For lock rings with internal splines only, use one of the FR5 family of tools. For lock rings with external notches, use the BBT9 or BBT69.2. You will also need a 3 8 inch drive ratchet and a torque wrench. Additionally, a 1 inch socket or adjustable wrench is needed to drive the splined lock ring tool. Clean rags and isopropyl alcohol. Engage the tool on the lock ring. Loosen counterclockwise and remove the ring. Now pull the rotor from the hub. When installing the new rotor, it is important that the rotor braking surface stay free of contaminants. Avoid touching it if possible. Rotors are designed to rotate one way. Some designs feature an arrow, which should match the rotation of the wheel. Otherwise, orient the rotor so the side with the writing is facing out. Grease is not necessary for center lock rotors and it may contaminate the rotor surface so do not apply grease to any components. Sometimes a rotor lock ring may not be compatible with the hub axle size. In this case, use a lock ring with external notches. Slide the rotor into place. Hand tighten the lock ring. Torque the lock ring to manufacture specifications. In our case, it's 40 newton meters. If you're using a hand wrench, that is about 44 pounds of effort holding the wrench eight inches from the lock ring. Use a clean rag and isopropyl alcohol to wipe both sides of the rotor surfaces. The wheel is now ready to reinstall on the bike. After installation, it is a good idea to bed in your brakes. See this video for more information. If you have a six bolt rotor and want to install it on a center lock compatible hub, you can use an adapter kit designed for this purpose. These kits vary slightly in design. Mate the adapter with the splines on the hub. In this example, thread the bolts through the rotor into the adapter. Clock the rotor and torque the bolts to the adapter in a star pattern, just as you would when installing onto a six bolt hub. Skip back to the time shown to learn more. Install any washes as applicable. Thread on and torque the lock ring. In this example, Simply engage the rotor with the six fittings on the adapter. Thread on the lock ring, clock the rotor, and torque the lock ring. After reinstalling the wheel, spin the wheel to verify that your caliper alignment is still good. Sometimes rotors are just slightly different from each other, causing the calipers to need realignment. Refer to our videos on disc brake caliper alignment for more information. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out our other repair help videos to get help with your brakes, derailers, chains, pranks, and much more. 
and subscribe to our channel to get the latest videos from Park Tool.